Hi, I'm Khalil Baruj. I'm the host of Palestine Studies TV, and today I'm going to be speaking to Leila Abdelazer, the author of the new graphic novel, Bidewi, published by Just World Books. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So, like, what made you want to write a graphic novel? Like, these, I got the impression that these are the stories that you grew up with, that mm-hmm. your dad told you. Mm-hmm. But, like, why a graphic novel as a f- medium to illustrate this? Um, well, I mean, when I started off, I didn't really intend to write a full graphic novel. Um, I was just doing, like, uh, individual blog posts, basically. Um, and I had always loved visual art, um, so I was just kind of, um, basically, like, I had free time during winter break, during freshman year of college, and, um, I really was interested in telling the stories that my, the kind of anecdotes that my dad had always told my brother and I from an early age, um, like over and over again, um, because a lot of those stories seem very normal within the Palestinian community, but were not as um, widely heard um, outside of that community. So I was just interested in like telling those stories and honoring that history. And so I started um, drawing them just as little individual anecdotes, comic strip form, um, and posting them on a blog and to my Facebook page. Um, and uh, eventually, um, I guess some people at Just World Books um, found out about the blog and they were like, oh, do you want to make this into a whole graphic novel? And that's when I started doing more research and like trying to string everything together. Um, but when I started, it was really just like, I had always loved art. I wanted to try drawing comics. I had never done it before. Um, and I was just like doing it as a hobby, basically. So yeah. So it was all pretty like spontaneous. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Palestine and Footnotes in Gaza, mm-hmm. two graphic novels on Palestine. Was that an inspiration for you when you started to work on this? Um, I think I actually read Footnotes in Gaza after I started working on this. I can't exactly remember, but um, I think... Joe Sacco's work is really, really different from mine um, because he kind of is doing like a research project and like was interviewing people to kind of string together um, a historical, you know, uh, an accurate historical account or as accurate of a historical account as he can do. Um, Whereas I was more interested in like dealing with my father's experience and um, telling a more personal conception of history, I guess, or a conception of it that's more grounded in like what my father's experience was as a child um, growing up there. So uh, I think mine was a much more personal project, whereas Sacco's work, you know, he's a comics journalist, so his stuff is more like research-based. Um, and I wasn't as interested in like trying to create like an accurate you know, history. You know, I, I obviously I wasn't going to deviate from history or anything, but I was less interested in creating some kind of research project and more interested in doing like you know, exploring my father's experience with all this stuff. So, so you you in your preface you speak about uh, how Ben Gurion said his famous or infamous saying that the old will die and the young will forget, and mm-hmm. that this graphic novel is a testament that the Palestinians have not forgotten. Mm-hmm. The very act of remembering is a form of cultural resistance mm-hmm. and telling these stories and making sure that future generations know them. So do you feel like this is more effective in reaching American audiences than say you know, what we do at IPS, which is much more academic and mm-hmm. it's going to be much more narrow in its focus mm-hmm. than for people in general? Do you feel like these type of, you know, whether it's images or movies, they can do a lot more in terms of bringing the Palestinian story to American audiences than simply relating the facts of 1948. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, because, um, or at least hopefully, because, um, you know, if you're going to go into a text like that, you usually have, like, an interest in that specific subject matter, and I feel like, I mean, I like reading (laughs) books with pictures in them. Um, I think it's more fun, and I think it's a way to draw people in who might otherwise not be so interested in the subject matter. Before I even uh, started reading this, and just from the cover, you see this kid, and you see his back, and his arms are folded behind him, and it clearly it's Handala, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Neji uh, Ilhani, Palestinian cartoonist who Mm -hmm. was assassinated in the late 70s, did his style of, you know, portraying the refugee 
and so the symbol of the refugee, like it's your father, but his story is the story of millions of people. Mm -hmm. Was that an influence on you as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, especially because he was dealing with the kind of the same subject matter I was, but he was writing, you know, he was drawing all his comics at the time that uh, that it all was happening. Um, And so I often looked at his work kind of as like a lens into. that period, I guess, and like as a way of understanding it, um, almost as like a historical document in and of itself. Um, so I was, yeah, I was definitely really influenced by his work, obviously, since I, you know, yeah. kind of directly reference um, his his comics in the cover. So one thing that really stood out for me that was not particularly new, but it was strongly impressed on me, mm-hmm. was the role of the Lebanese army mm-hmm. and its control of the camps. Mm-hmm. And we see that the army was very brutal mm-hmm. and often in coordination with the Israelis. Mm-hmm. Did you want to highlight that, the fact that we often, sometimes we were so taken in by the occupation and what Israel has done to the Palestinians mm-hmm. that we often forget that Arab regimes have treated Palestinians very poorly, mm-hmm. whether in Kuwait, Syria, mm-hmm. and in Lebanon, where probably Palestinian refugees have suffered the most. Mm-hmm. Um, was that an, an objective for you to sort of illustrate that story that Arab regimes have to not been allies, but they've often even been enemies? Yeah, definitely. And like, um, I guess highlighting that dual oppression, basically, like, um, you know, not forgetting the fact that the reason Palestinians are in the camps in the first place is because of the ethnic cleansing in 1948 and referencing that at the beginning and end of the book in a really strategic way. But yeah, also highlighting... Um, you know, the role of the Lebanese government um, really directly in that, and then also even other regimes like um, like the Assyrian regime and um, their role in, like, Tel Zatad and, like, you know, um, basically not, not excusing those Arab regimes who have, like, sort of uh, used the Palestinian struggle to, like, gain you know, popular support, but at the end of the day, historically haven't done much, um, you know, just kind of like the Palestinian struggle has been a rhetorical tool, and um, in reality they they have, you know, not <laughs> really acted on their so-called support of, um, of the Palestinian people, especially in the camps. When you started working on this as an actual graphic novel, how did you go about structuring it, like in terms of did you have in your mind what type of reader did you have? Did you have somebody who's already informed about Palestine, or did you have someone who has no idea? And you, you clear, you have an index at the mm-hmm. end. I mean, you, you define a lot of terms. Mm-hmm. Was that, was that your, is this your target audience? Yeah, I wanted to do both. So I wanted to use symbols and imagery that would be recognizable to other Palestinians and people who are more familiar with the history. Um, but I also wanted to, I didn't want to alienate people who are less familiar with the subject matter. Um, and I also didn't want to like bash people over the head with political um, messaging because I think a lot of it was implicit, even though I was strategic about the way I did things. Um, I didn't want like explaining history or explaining political terms to detract from the story. Um, and so, uh, or like take you out of the narrative that I was trying to take the reader through, which was my father's personal experiences, so um, including the glossary was a way of, like, mitigating that, I guess, like, you know, giving enough background for people who are not familiar to, like, understand what's going on, but also not detracting from the story um, in a way that, like, takes you out of it. I mean, is that the audience you want to reach, though? Is it mostly people who don't know about Palestine? Not necessarily. Um, I was also writing kind of for, like, you know, hoping that, like, if my dad looks at this, he would feel like, oh, you know, you kind of got at the heart of it, or if someone else from my father's generation looked at it, they would be able to see maybe some of themselves in it, or if people in my generation read it, that they would be able to see some of their family history in it. So I was writing, not necessarily, I don't think it's really constructive to, like, um, work on a project for the purpose of defying stereotypes because I feel like that or like proving people wrong because I feel like then you get so wrapped up in like what you think other people are thinking about you that you like are no longer being honest with the story or with yourself. 
I wouldn't say that I was writing for 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 people who don't know about the history or something like that to try and like prove something. Um, but I wanted it to be accessible and like um, for people to connect to it, regardless of where they come from or what kind of knowledge they have of the subject matter. Have you gone back to the camp? Mm-hmm. Have yeah. you, with, with your novel, have you showed it to the people in the camp? So my family still lives there. Um, I was studying there last semester, um, and I was like working a lot on it like while I was staying with my family, so my family has all like, you know, read parts of it and seen it. Um, and what's the reaction been? The, my family's reaction is kind of funny. They would be like, oh, you know, I have stories I could tell you about your father and stuff like that. Um, but uh, positive, like, yeah. Well, just one last question. is: Are you working on anything else? Is this something that you want to continue doing now? Mm-hmm. From telling others Palestinian stories through the graphic novels? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of done with this story because I worked on it for a long time. Um, but I'm interested in maybe doing other comics work dealing with issues of diaspora and stuff. So um, maybe moving out of this particular story and into some other ones. So thank you for being with us today. We really enjoyed talking with you. And thank you for joining us at Palestine Studies TV. If you're interested in buying Bidoui, visit www.justworldbooks.com.